another question from Matt. Uh, I, I saw on some of the shows I've been able to catch on the podcast that you were in the military. Mm-hmm. Um, were you an atheist while you were in the military? No. Or? No. no? Was. She was. How How is it viewed in the military? Because I have a few friends that are going into the military this year that are atheists. Yeah. Um, it, you know, when I originally joined the military, it was, I don't know, it, it, it was really kind of a non-issue. There's always been this sort of ceremonial deism that was present in some of the ceremonies and everything, but it was not overtly um, a, a religious expression, you know. It was, it was sort of like the same kind of ceremonial deism that you see in, like, the Declaration of Independence or something. Uh, okay. Th- as time went on, it got more and more overt. Um, the evangelical crowd kind of dug their heels in and started doing their evangelizing. And, and by the time I left... Um, it was actually a pretty uncomfortable situation for atheists. Um, okay. It, to the point where, I mean, every every um, every parade, every change of command, everything had had overtly religious activities inserted in it, and that's actually not part of the military history. So it's they, couldn't, not, they couldn't fall it's back. It's a more recent phenomenon. Pardon me. I said is it, it's a more recent phenomenon that they do. Uh, I, I would say that it, that it has picked up. Uh, probably uh, slowly, but probably in the last 15 years or so, it's gotten much more overt. Okay, because uh, yeah, all the time there's uh, you know Navy parties and Army parties and such right right around D.C. in the same areas that I socialize in, and they're they're very denominational type uh, parties and activities that I that I always see associated with the military. So I was just curious how that went over in the military. Yeah, and you, you even have some commanders who think that they can, um, like uh, an, an episode that happened when I was um, still in the reserves, uh, a brigade commander tried to um, have the chaplain come in and lead a prayer before each of his staff calls. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't do that. Yeah. Officers don't come to staff call either voluntarily or because they want to have a prayer meeting. And okay. come to so, staff call to do the brigade's business, and that's not um, praying to whatever deity the commander believes in. And there's actually uh, a couple of the lawsuits going on now with regard to this, the, the, the problems in the military with regard to religion and atheism. Um, there's a young private from Kansas that's suing, um, and I'm, he's received death threats and another a number of other problems. Um, and there's there somebody else who just recently sued um, for uh, because they were being forced to attend uh, services. And 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 the problem, yeah, this is relatively recent. It, it's certainly gotten worse over the last 15, 20 years, whatever. Um, but it, it branches out from just the daily activities of individual soldiers, sailors, marine, and airmen. Right. Uh, it you had the problems at the Air Force Academy where you had evangelical Christians who were essentially hazing uh, non-believers and Jews in particular, um, right. and that was exposed. Um, and then you have high-ranking military chaplains who write books that say. Uh, atheists can't be good soldiers, and then they get an endorsement from General Petraeus, for example. Um, and and this, you know, there are two of the, uh, you know, the the highest ranking individual with regard to our efforts in in Iraq and Afghanistan at the present time, um, and a very high ranking chaplain. One of them is making this statement that is uh, divisive, untrue. Uh, it, it maligns many good uh, military personnel, and one of them is making the statement, and the other one is endorsing it. Um, granted, he endorsed the, the book on the whole, but it, it would surprise me. Well, maybe, you know, maybe he didn't read it, but that's irresponsible <laughs> as well. Uh, and so, yeah, there is, there is this problem within the military. Now, I'm not saying it's necessarily terrible for everybody. Um, there are plenty of people in the military with who probably never have any issue at all. Um, one of the things that Oak talked about, he, he was retired, he was in for 30 years. He got out before some of the more recent things uh, have happened. But his point was that you know he never really had any issues. He was an atheist the, the entire time and never had an issue. Um, but the, you, know, I, you hear it all the time, this you know, no atheists in foxholes, 
nonsense. And even when we saw religious the other night, um, there was somebody in there who made a comment along those lines, of, you know, and, or, or maybe it was another thing that I was watching where, where somebody basically said, you know, you, you, when you're under fire, um, uh, there are no atheists in foxholes and type thing. Well, that's not true. There are atheists in foxholes. And uh, Pat Tillman, for example, um, I was just thinking of him. Yeah, I've who seen was him portrayed as incredibly spiritual by some propaganda, and I find it ridiculous. And yeah. he was quite an atheist; like he he made no bones about it. Yet they still portray him as a spiritual person who died for this and that when he died because he believed in fighting for his country and for no other reason. And I and and if you believe the reports, if the reports about what happened are accurate, um, you know, at the time under fire when people around him were losing their head and calling out to their God, he's the one who smacked them to attention and said, hey, we've got to take care of ourselves here um, and, you know, focus on the task at hand. Um, and I'm not, I, I don't want to make that sound like, you know, oh, it's not the atheists that are weak, it's the religious people that are weak. That's, that's not the point. The, the, the point is that from a practical standpoint, allows you to deal with reality on reality's terms. Um, yeah, you know, if you believe something and it, and it gives you hope or comfort, you know, good for you, um, as long as those beliefs don't dictate actions that affect other people. Once that happens, um, I, I'm no longer just going to say it's okay for you to have those beliefs, because it's not okay. Um, right. if, if your beliefs wind up costing other people their lives or taking away and preventing other people's rights and freedoms, that's a big problem.